A bad Shufa score will hurt you in many fields of your life for a very long time. That's probably why there are lots of myths spread on the internet on how to improve your Shufa score. If you paid attention over the last two weeks, you know it's not that easy to game the system. Shufa is collecting data on your payment history from its more than 10,000 business partners. So don't believe anyone who pretends to have some magic tricks to manipulate your Shufa score. Not possible and not necessary, because there are some solid tips that can boost your Shufa score tremendously. They're actually pretty easy to do, they might just take some time until they show their full effect. It. Let me also spread a rumor. Just watching this video will improve your Shufa score. What's up everyone? Welcome to a new video from Perfinex, the number one English speaking and independent financial planner in Germany. Today with another video that could save you thousands of euros when you want to apply for a loan. Two weeks ago I told you about a client that might have cost himself 15,000 euros while destroying his dream of buying a home for his family, without even knowing it. If you missed it, check the info box. Last week we talked about what you can do when there's a negative entry in your Shufa report. Also right here. So let's speak this week about the 10 tips that will protect you from getting a negative Shufa entry. Let's start with tip 1 and 2 at the same time because these are perfect tips for the upcoming weekend. Limit your bank accounts and credit cards. Tomorrow is weekend. Finally! So take a look at all the bank accounts you have, the checking accounts, the saving accounts, the credit cards. Look, I know you have a lot. There's all these advertisements and promotions and get 10 euro here and 20 euro there and everything's free anyway. So why not get them, right? But all of a sudden you have five different bank accounts you don't even use and you don't even remember them anymore and five credit cards laying in the drawer. Congrats, you earned a couple of bucks in promotional gifts, but this really hurts your Shufa score. Don't get me wrong, having a credit card is good for your Shufa score because you're considered trustworthy. But why would anybody need more than two credit cards? Exactly, Shufa is asking the same question and decreases your score. Also, don't change your bank account every other day. Shufa likes long-term contracts. Speaking of the long term, Shufa also likes tip number three, stay in one residence for the long term. Avoid frequent changes of your place of residence. If you move more often than average, Shufa will consider you less trustworthy. Just recently, someone sent us a screenshot via Instagram that showed his Shufa base score at two lousy percent. You want to know more what the Shufa base score is? Check this video right here. Just as a reminder, 2% means Shufa believes he will pay his bills with a probability of 2% and default at a probability of 98%. Apparently, he talked to Shufa and they told him that his address wasn't synchronized yet, so they temporarily decreased his base score. Keep that in mind when you have any big changes in your financial life planned. Alright. Now that you have a reliable bank account and a reliable place to stay, it's time for you to be reliable with tip 4, pay your bills, on time and in full. In last week's video, I told you that actually a lot has to happen before you get a negative Shufa entry. But still, pay all your bills. If just one out of the 10,000 business partners from Shufa tells them that you're not paying your bills, all 9,999 other business partners will consider you less trustworthy. So whenever someone sends you an invoice, show some form of reaction and don't ignore it. If the invoice is correct, pay it on time and pay it in full. If the invoice is not correct, reach out to the company before they reach out to Shufa and get you a negative entry. If it is not possible for you to pay on time and in full, you want to do tip 5, talk to your creditor. Look, 
anyone can get into a financially dicey situation at some point in their life. Short term work, loss of job, illness. You know it, I know it, Shufa knows it. That's all right. But if it happens, man up and be an adult. I'm not gonna say women up because there's no women watching anyway. The faster you reach out to whoever you owe money to, the less likely you are to get a negative Shufa entry. So talk to them. Having a temporary financial constraint is nothing to be ashamed about. I also haven't heard of any company that isn't willing to negotiate. At least you're reaching out to them and try to find a solution, right? And if there's no other way, you can also overdraw your bank account. But then you want to pay attention to tip number six, Dispo no-no. You may have heard Germans talk about Dispo, short for Dispo Kredit. Basically overdrawing your bank account. Now, having the overdraw function available is not a problem. Just having this function and not using it at all can even be considered good for your Shufa score. Using it once can also be okay. Using it multiple times is not okay. First, because you have to pay an interest rate that is unnecessarily high and second, because it is bad for your Shufa score. Rather get a loan than using your dispo. And when you apply for a loan, follow tip 7, inquiry for conditions, not for credit. This is where our client f***ed up his Shufa score without even knowing it. It's a subtle difference, but an important one. When you apply for a loan somewhere, pay attention that you only request for conditions that is Shufa neutral and they will never know. If you run around and request a credit everywhere, Shufa will get noticed every time and they will interpret this as a sign that you have problems getting a credit. This is important because you can hurt your Shufa score for the next 12 months. If you want a loan and want to compare different offers, do a Schufa Neutrale Konditionsanfrage. This is enough to find the best offer for you. And as soon as you decide which loan you want to get, then you can allow the company to get your Schufa score. So pay attention to what you're signing. This is a generally good tip in life anyway. Speaking about loans, tip 8. Consolidate your loans. Having a loan is fine for Schufa. It can also be considered beneficial for your score, as long as you pay it, of course. I mean, someone considered you trustworthy enough to lend you money, right? But using all of these 0% financing promotions when you shop for furniture or electrical devices or cl clothing or whatever is really bad for your Shufa score. Rather than having a small loan here and a small loan there, take one large loan and your Shufa score will be very happy about that. And if you have a lot of small loans already, ask the companies if you can pay off your loans in full. If so, do a Shufa Neutrale Konditionsanfrage, like I mentioned in tip 7, secure one big loan that is large enough to pay off all your small loans and pay off your small loans. Tip number 9, protect yourself against identity theft. We have just seen it in the last couple of weeks, one of the largest brokers in Germany had a data breach and personal data of more than 30,000 customers has been stolen. Same can happen if a fraudster hacks your password and goes online shopping in your name without even paying of course. Both are very, very, very bad for your Shufa score. And if you have been a victim of identity theft already, reach out to Shufa and tell them to make a mark in your report. In this case, if one of their business partners asks for your creditworthiness, they will get notified that you have been a victim of identity theft and look closer at your data. And that's better than straight up rejecting you in the first place. Oh, uh, and report your identity theft to the police and get a new ID immediately. Whoever stole your ID can pretend to be you. And as soon as you get a new one, the robber can't harm you anymore. And last but not least, tip 10, have incorrect Shufa entries deleted. 
Apparently, every second Shufa report is wrong. So don't worry if yours is wrong as well. You can get false or old information corrected. Just send Shufa a letter with some sort of proof why you think your report is wrong and they should correct it. And if Shufa refuses to delete or correct false entries in your file, you can contact the so-called Umboots person at this address right here on the screen. They will help you settle your dispute with Shufa. And how would you know that your Shufa report is wrong? Well, you have to get one. And how do you do that? Two options. Both can be found in the first link in the description. Option 1 is the online version called My Shufa Compact. That one costs a one-time fee and a monthly fee, but also protects you against identity theft. The right option is the old school paper version that is free of charge. Just attach a copy of your passport or ID and they will send you your Shufa report soon. TM. Our next video will probably be sooner next Friday. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to give us a thumbs up. And if there are any questions left, write us a comment or text us on WhatsApp. See you in the next video.